Holloway Summit. Um, and then I got what we say in Hebrew, the kafa metanzelet, the ringing slap. And I understood, I don't want to do this when I'm 25 or 35, and I don't want this to be my legacy when I'm 65 or 85. So for all you musicians, I'm sorry, but music died for me that day. I did understand that I am super passionate about these two things that are all about who I am. So I said, okay, I want to do them at scale. I am 23 years old, Israeli, after the army, before university, so I need to go and study and acquire a profession. And I want to get paid for what I want to do, so I need to find a profession where you get paid to do this. So which kind of people, I thought to myself, represent their countries? Like formally, it's written on their business card. Ideas. Ambassadors. Who brought the okay, thank you. That's what I thought. I thought, of course, you idiot. You're not a musician or nothing. You should go and be an ambassador. And you should prepare yourself to be the best ambassador Israel ever had. Because that's the war you want to fight to win. Cool. So go study the relevant things like political science and economics, which I did, you agree with me. Um, also go work in relevant places and acquire the experience you need to go and do that, because the GPA is not everything. So I went to work for organizations that really, really mattered for that slap in the face that I got when I was young. I then went to work for the government. I had the best job if you want to be an ambassador. I was working as an economist in the Ministry of Finance. My job was to prepare economic content and distribute it to all our ambassadors all over the world. So I was working with all the people I wanted to later on become, and also with all the foreign ambassadors here, so I was very active in the local diplomatic community. That's how I spent my late 20s up until I was 27. Moved to the private sector, so Asaf, you need to know the private sector if you want to be a good ambassador. You need to know how to sell, how to negotiate, how a price quote looks like. You need to understand the business world. So go out there and work with startups and entrepreneurs. Go work with large corporations, do business <coughs> for them. So I was the man with the plan. It's by no accident you see third sector, like nonprofits, government, for-profit small, for-profit big. Here's another thing that happened. Started here, 2008, this book, Startup Nation comes out and completely changes everything that I, as an economic Israel public diplomacy guy, am doing. And suddenly we get here ships filled with containers, filled with boxes, filled with business delegations from all over the world. Investors, entrepreneurs, business people, policy makers, um, you name it, MBA students, they all start to come here. And I'm there when it happens. And I'm, start, I'm starting to get these requests. Asaf, could you maybe meet our group? Um, tell us a little bit about the Israeli economy. Or we read the book, tell us like the secret beyond the book. How do you do business in Israel? What's happening these days? Can you add value to the group? Can you help us build a program behind the scenes? Can you do this? Can you do that? And so on and so forth. To which I've said, sure, I'm going to volunteer and do it as much as I want. Because if I do this at scale, before I even apply to be an ambassador, I'm going to be the best freaking candidate they ever had. So that's what I did throughout this journey. And as you can see from the way I'm telling you this story, I am not. So my plan failed. Cool, change. That's a nice way of putting it. When I was 29 and a half, this didn't feel like change. It felt like failed. And it hurt. I had a huge career life crisis. Um, I lost my professional destiny. And I was broken. And then I learned that, you know, there are these times in our lives where, you know, when we plan, like you plan, then the big boss laughs. And then you cry. Right? Plan, laugh. Cry. I cry, like a lot. Well, why did the big boss laugh? 
because maybe eventually, funnily enough, this whole thing became my business. The last thing I ever wanted to do is start my own business out of this whole thing. This was supposed to be a means to an end, not become an end to itself. Um, but I underwent this <coughs> process and I turned this into a business and I'm going to come back to that process in a while. So today I do a lot of content and a lot of ambassadorship work for Startup Nation here and abroad. Um, I also do a lot of consulting for startups in startup land, um, for organizations that are in this industry here and abroad um, through informal education, the Jewish world, the business world. I work with a lot of business schools from all over the world. That's what got me to be a CEO of a startup for two years, which I did not plan to do when I was 23, but that's what I did until I became 32. Two years, between 30 and 32. Um, so I am very operated, I'm very active in the professional startup world. I work with programs like Techstars, with a lot of startups directly. Um, I'm part of Israeli startups like Silo, which given the context of this uh, audience, you should all spend time on, but I'm not here to push Silo now. So that's a little bit about me and my journey. I have another business, which we're not going to talk about. Um, why is WeWork in my intro chapter? Because WeWork held the Creator Awards event in October 26th here in Tel Aviv. And ever since that evening, I did not want to say anything about it. A lot of people told me that I'm a plain idiot for not saying it. So they held the event, and I was one of the winners. So there I said it, we can move on. So in short, independent consultant speaker. Uh, I led a startup for two years as an external CEO. I'm doing biz dev at Silo. I have a laser-focused passion in my professional life, <coughs> and here's the real punchline. I've learned the hard way to differentiate and separate between the why and the what and the how. I realized that being an ambassador is the what and the how, that's not the why. The why is to promote Israel at scale, to show the real face of this place to everyone out there so they could make up their own mind and not judge this place by bullshit information and false things they get from somewhere else. That's my war. That's my why. And if an ambassador is not going to be the way to do it, I'm going to find another way to do it. I'll change my what and how, but I'm going to stick to my why. And I'm going to come to that later on. So that's, about, that's a little bit about me and my journey. <coughs> and this brings me to the background, which is the backstory of all this long intro, which is today's world of work, which you all feel, you all talk about every now and then, but we never stopped and bothered to really pause and look at it and understand the implications of it. So, what I'm about to say is not going to be new to a lot of you. The world of work has changed on all of us. We all grew up seeing Chandler from Friends or Barney from How, you met, How I Met Your Mother. Those people suited up who go to the corporate 15th floor, and that's where they work. You don't really know what they do, but that's their job. And that's kind of like the impression a lot of us grew up on. That's the world of jobs. But that's not the world of work today. So the world of work has changed. You all know that. Not only in this place, everywhere. It is not about jobs anymore. It's about careers. And a career is not a random set of jobs. Things you used to think are stable and you can count on, on like employer-employee relationship, became variables in the equations. And things you thought cannot be relied upon became the new constants. Everything flipped on us. And today, it's all about the value of your brand. And no, I do not mean your social media and your LinkedIn profile, not your logo, your blog, or your Wix website. I'm talking about your reputation, what people say about you behind your back, and what people feel and what comes up into their mind where your name is being thrown around, the initial impressions. 
That's the brand. And that's what really matters today. Here's a way to understand this. In the old world, you would go and study a profession. Say, I don't know, law. So you would study law in law school. You went there in order to obtain a profession. And then you went to work and gain expertise. You would go to law, work in a law firm. You start junior, then associate, then you go manager, partner, whatever. And you become a master in your job, in being a lawyer. So it's no coincidence the employer-employee relationship was a sacred marriage. Our great-great-grandfathers, grandparents, they went to work in the factory in 1910. The factory built a town around the factory with a school so you, we could put the kids in school and go to work. Working for that corporate defined who we are as a group, as a tribe, and we are tribal animals. So people used to say in the old world of work, where do you work? Which is the equivalent of tell me who you are. But that's not the world of work today. Well, today you still go to law school. But what you really acquire is skills. You join a certain business community and build a network. You still go to the same law firm. You're in the real estate department, let's say, and you start working with real estate customers in the real estate sector. Two years later, surprise, surprise, you go to work for a real estate development firm and you're their legal counsel in-house. Three years after that, you go to work for a real estate investment fund and you're going to be their legal guy. And you're going to work with your past law firm and with those developers you met in the real estate conferences you went to as a lawyer because you are in the real estate business. You become a master in your business. So it's no surprise the employee-employee relationship is a short-term deal. It's transactional. No, it is not your fault that you switch jobs every two years. It's just that the constants and the variables have not for everyone, but by large numbers for most of us. So today, pay attention to this. People don't ask where do you work, they ask what do you do? Which is very different than where are you doing it. It's not the where that is constant and what you do that changes. It's what you do that is constant and where you do it that changes. That's the new world of work. Your career is not the random set of jobs you will hold on to. Our careers are actually made up of our education, our vision, our skills, our interests, our values, our goals. The fluffy fluff stuff is now the new constant. Just like a sentence is not a random set of words, you need context. So I'm a big believer in the world of career, not the world of jobs. The world of career is the new world of work, instead of the world of jobs. Which brings me to the punchline, which is something I, I really felt on myself throughout my journey, from nonprofits to government, to the startup space, to large corporations building my own business, that is Solo Entrepreneur, which is the new branded name for freelancer. And I've been pounding it a lot in the community, and I'm going to pound it a lot more because I really believe in this, and that's where we can add value to ourselves, <coughs> I understand that. So please, I ask you to listen to the following idea. I believe that in today's world of work, you are, I am, we all are business units. We are all business units. You're an entrepreneur, of course you're trying to build a new business unit. You're a freelancer, you are your own business unit. You work in the 15th floor of that large corporation as an employee in the financial department and you think this is far away from you, I've got news for you. You are too a business unit by concept in the on-demand economy. 
we are profit and loss independent business units, meaning we are provided with inputs and we bring back outputs. It is our responsibility to make sure as business units that the outputs are greater than the inputs. And the reason is that you are not the small time employee you thought you are. You are a service provider as a business unit. Because my belief is that your boss is your customer. Customers don't only need to receive what they ask for, they need to be satisfied. That's something else. So you all sit there in your jobs and you think about your company and how you should stand out in front of the competition and bring just a little bit more value to your customers. Why aren't we doing the same for ourselves as individuals? For we are business units. And if your boss is your customer, because they pay for the inputs, but they're not the only ones who enjoy the outputs, everyone else is your consumer. Your team members, your colleagues, the customers you work with, the service providers, your entire business community consumes you, even if they do not pay for it. The better is not enough anymore. Not that is what will get you promoted. You need to add value, just like you recommend your own company to do in its market. Do it inside the company. You're looking for a job. My belief is you're not looking for a job. You're a business unit. You are effectively, in beyond the man economy, the owner of you.com or you, your name, LLC, or LTD. You're not looking for a job. You need sales. You need to do marketing. You need to biz dev your potential employers. Just as if you were working as a business development person for a company. You need to sell your potential employer and make them understand what they should buy and consume you. Because they're not your employer, they are your customer. And you are a business unit. In today's world, we need to constantly ask, what can we do that will be an added value that other people actually <coughs> want and need? It's not what my boss asked me to do. It's what I can do to help my boss. Because my boss is a business unit, too, in the on-demand economy. And you need to tell your story and make sure that story puts you in a light where people understand that you are unique and valuable and relevant. Your network and your business community, they are today more important than ever. Because we are not in jobs land anymore. We're in career land. So your employer will not tell you who you are. And so many of you, me included, I was, so many of you are still looking every two years for the next job that will help you find yourself. That's a myth. Your employer will not determine who you are. We are not in that 1910 factory. That world is gone. The answer is not outside in the job you're looking again and again for every two years. It's in here. You need to tell your potential employers who you are, your potential customers who you are. It's on you, just like it's on your company to do its own marketing and not let the customers define for your company who you are. Same logic. So we are all business units in today's on-demand economy. So what are the implications here? Well, if we were a company and we need to bang our heads against the wall in order to do better marketing and do better in business as a real company, what would we do? Well, I'll tell you what corporations do. They call McKinsey or Bain or BCG or Shadow or all Tax or all these consulting firms. And they give them a nice check. And what they want in return is a strategic plan with a lot of market research and a nice presentation for the board that probably cost a million bucks in order 
Two, by the way, go to that company offsite and talk about it and have fun, golfing or sit at the beach, kumbaya, drum circle, whatever. But then, when we get to business, we need to understand how should we position ourselves as a company in our market for maximum success. That's what we do as companies. And since I believe we are all business units individually, I think we should do the same for ourselves. So I'm not saying you should call McKinsey, but this idea brings me to this person. His name is Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek. One of the most famous TED Talks ever. And he wrote, and he brought the idea of start with why. Which I'm not here to preach because you can all go online, youtube.com, search Simon Sinek, start with why. But I believe you need to find a why to commit to. Because that's the new constant. You have to find that why, and that why should not only be what the market is willing to accept, it also has to be true to your DNA. And you have to commit with it, because that why can never change. And if that why never changes, then the what and the how can. And when you allow for the what and the how to change, fast, slow, according to needs, because you're not romantic about them, that's where real innovation emerges from. And then you're able to reinvent yourself. And especially for this community and this audience, you all made an epic move with your lives, an entrepreneurial move, no less than that, a pioneer move, because you all came here. How many people here are not Olim? or not internationals, born and raised Israelis. Okay, so for the rest of you, you already have done something incredible. Your why, I believe, should have a part from that, because it's who you are. But that's where you can really reinvent yourself. You came here and you were, I don't know, a financial analyst back in New York, and you came here, you can compete on being a financial analyst in Israel and try to be better, faster than Danny Cohen from Petah Tikva, or you can understand that you can be unique, relevant, valuable, and different, and add more value to your potential employer, aka your potential customer. And instead of looking for a job like Danny Cohen, bid them your next employer. That why, is probably your actual career calling. And I believe that today, this is not a nice to have, it's a necessity, not only if you want to thrive, if you want to survive. And you may still feel safe up there in the 15th floor of that corporate, but I'm telling you, it's coming towards you. That's the new world of work. Your boss and their bosses probably already understand that and feel that. So it's coming. So you need to communicate that why once you find it. Communicate that to the world. Especially to the people you want to work for, given that why. Because they are your potential customers. They are your next employers. So you need to become a mission-driven individual. That's what I really believe in. People who go through this process quick, quicker <coughs> put themselves in a better position to win faster in today's world of work. Whether you go outside and start your own business or you stay in employer's land and just get that promotion and reinvent your next position inside the office because you're biz deving everyone around you. And then you're able to start sticking to things you really believe in, like doing well by doing good. Like being a real true giver and like doing what you love for the rest of your life. So I don't know to tell you if in 10 to 15 years I'm gonna grow my business to a big company, or I'm gonna shut it down and go work for the government, or go to work in a large nonprofit in the Jewish world. I don't know. 
Maybe a new organization called Moshe Squared will come around and that'll be the new thing. I don't know. But I know I'm going to be doing my why. Because that's who I am. And I've taught my business community and my network to accept that. So you can do what you love for the rest of your life. So, it's not Passover yet, but um, this is not an epic Exodus story where I tell you, you should go to Pharaoh, give him the finger, say, let my people go, take your Israelites and go look for your promised land, go start your own business, be a freelancer in the online world. I'm not saying that. A lot of people probably should and, you know, be employees. I was an employee most of my life and succeed more in that world. That's cool. By the way, entrepreneurship is not going to be cool forever. So don't be fooled by current culture and fireworks and you know people with t-shirts of logos of companies who were not around two years ago and may not be around two years from now. Be true to yourself. But that's not that story. I believe that in today's world, Pharaoh himself is kicking you outside of Egypt to your own desert to look for that self-fulfillment or that job of your life or the work you want to do which is what most of us doing when we're looking for a job aka business our next project or customer and when we are working whether we are entrepreneurs or employees I think that today Pharaoh himself understands that he too is a business unit. And that changes him. That's the new world. And I am not in my own promised land, but I'm telling you, you need to find a promised land that is worth spending your career looking for and getting to. Because I'm just another Bedouin in the desert on my way to mine, which is going to be here and add value and help you all get to yours. Thank you.